I think it's this way the family probably that I grew up in. My mom was a nurse and my dad was a chemist. So many of the conversations were around patients, medicines, chemicals, you know. And I remember in the 90s we had a female vice president. I was very little then. And she was a surgeon. So I always wanted to be like her, you know. That really, I think, <laughs> motivated me to take a science field. I remember when I was a girl and I told uh, my sisters and my other relatives I wanted to be a medical doctor. They discouraged me a lot. They were like, science is so hard, it's rigorous, and if you get married, you won't be able to attend to your family. But also the language used when referring to scientists is um, the use of the he pronouns, you know? You really hear the she's. So sometimes when you're growing up, you get to get a feeling that probably the science is for men. And when it comes to the women, I think lack of mentors or role models influences them quite a bit. Maybe a lot, actually, because for me, I had a role model. It was like my mom, the vice president, the first female vice president. I looked so much up to those people, you know. I always wanted to be like them. Right from the early stages, uh, girls really need people that mentor them, that inspire them, you know. The power of teachers. Teachers play a key role. You know, lecturers, instructors. It's like we learn from them. They are there to carry us on. But also rewarding those who do well in science. If they can be rewarded for being very innovative and creative in solving problems of the world. For my PhD, I was in a project that um, dealt with indigenous knowledge of agrobiodiversity and indigenous foods. And from there, that kind of worked as a, as a springboard for me to become more interested in um, agrarian livelihoods and agriculture more broadly. They tend to cluster around lack of access to resources, um, lack of access to opportunities, and both of those are influenced by um, kind of pervasive gender stereotypes and biases that work to dissuade women from engaging in STEM careers or even being able to see themselves in those type of roles. I really can't be underestimated the the role of role models in being able to see what are the types of careers that are available. And then in so far as being able to keep women <laughs> that are already engaged as scientists in the field, um, I think that's really contingent on, I guess, number one, creating an enabling environment um, for, for women where they feel that they can thrive and also engaging in mentoring schemes, um, being able to have that inbuilt support network within a position I think is really important to the kind of continued success of women in science. It was actually an archaeology class called the uh, Prehistoric Diet and Nutrition that got me into under, trying to understand human food systems in an evolutionary point of view. And I was an anthropology major. Uh, so we're interested in human variability and all of its facets, and ge gender is, of course, a very important one of those. So I'm interested in, you know, uh, gendered facets of human variability in food systems, but also variability in wealth, variability in um, ethnic institutions, variability in age sets, and all of these different aspects. It can be hard to combine career and uh, starting a family when support isn't given. To recognize the, the extra burden that many women carry in terms of expectations of engaging in familial obligations uh, and to create space to, to allow them to deal with that and still succeed in, uh, in their careers. I've remarked before in places that no one has ever asked me how I combine career and having a family. But I think we need to dispel the notion that this is a women's issue. 
is that if we leave it to women to deal with women in science, then it's only can only ever get so far because in the end it's it's men's behavior and this uh, especially senior researcher men who are in the best position to leverage this issue so this is yeah this this is not a an issue that only the women scientists should be pushing this is i think foremost uh in many ways this is an issue that is more of an issue for the men scientists uh and institutional leaders than it is for the women The women know they're capable of getting all the men on board with recognizing that.